And uh, I suspect that we are going to face uh, now a, a different situation. Uh, Mr. Kamel in uh, the Middle East, uh, which has uh, strong specificities, uh, including uh, environmental speci and geographic specificities in this uh, major channel. And uh, here we are at uh, the right place to discuss those issues. Uh, thank you. I'm not sure if the presentation is up and running, but even without it. Uh, first, thank you all for still being with us. I know we stand between you and your uh, breaks for the evening. Uh, it's indeed a very important uh, topic, especially in the Middle East. The good news for the Middle East is that uh, national food security has been an item for at least the last 30 years in the Middle East. Um, while it's becoming a hot topic around the world, we've been dealing with it for, for a long time. But there has been major changes uh, over the years, especially over the last almost uh, eight years in terms of how we look at uh, national food security. Let me highlight my contribution here is that I come from the private sector. However, the role or the projects we do is, are in public-private partnerships with the government. For example, in Qatar, uh, a couple years back, we flew in cows by plane, first airlift of cows. We work within one to two years to ensure 100% self-sufficiency uh, of dairy. Uh, products in Qatar. Today, as was mentioned, we are working in Egypt to again ensure self-sufficiency in, in sugar uh, by uh, doing land reclamation for a land as big as Singapore, a desert land, by using uh, disruptive or new technologies in this. But let me look at food security. Historically in the region, it was easy. It was about availability, affordability, accessibility. And essentially, governments would import it because only 3% of our land overall are fit for agriculture. Almost 97%, depending on the country that you are in, uh, is not, does not have the soil or the water needed for you to do agriculture. Uh, government had lots of money, so they can import and subsidize food programs around the uh, region. For example, in Egypt, 70 million people receive some kind of food subsidy. For, uh, for bread, 70 million out of about 110, 120 million people. So, but this uh, model is not sustainable. You know, oil prices will not always go up. We heard earlier today they will start maybe going down. Uh, governments cannot continue to run uh, budget deficit. And we had another complication really, which is the health crisis in the region. We have the highest, or the second highest diabetes rates around the world. So what happened over the years is that diabetes, uh, heart problems start coming early. We have them at ages of in the early 40s versus 50s in other parts of the world. Again, government responded by spending money on healthcare, putting the hospitals, sending people first abroad, then putting hospitals in. And now they realized also it's not sustainable. It's neither sustainable to subsidize imported food nor is it sustainable to continue spending money on treating sick people from chronic disease. And that's now where food security has graduated into. It's about wellness, nutrition. It's not about now making, let's say, poor people or rich people uh, just having food in their tummies. It's about making sure they have the right food in their tummies so that they do not get sick, so that I don't have spent too uh, money on them buying insulin for their sugar, sugar problems. So when you have this change in food uh, security approach in the region, which said we need now to have good food, we cannot continue to import it expensive for many reasons, and we cannot continue to have people eating unhealthy food. So now we are working to ensure we have some kind of self-sufficiencies or at least a reasonable uh, domestic component production of agriculture. And that's what we are seeing things happening. What made this happen? Technology, pure and simple. Without disruptive technologies, we would not have been able to reclaim the desert. We have disruptive, uh, without disruptive technologies, we wouldn't be able to optimize the production and the use and minimizing the use of water. And without uh, these uh, technologies, we wouldn't be able to develop higher yields for cows, higher yields uh, for for sugar, higher yields in every area of the agriculture side. Do we face challenges? Indeed, many. The public sector has different expectations from the private sector. Major mismatch 
between the public sector and the region and the private sector. Goals, expectations, timelines, return on investments. Add to it another component. We really need uh, always R&D, research and development, and our regional companies, and I've run two of the larger ones in agriculture, do not have the funding to do significant R&D investment. So we need the third component in the public-private partnerships, which are universities. The universities in the region are well-funded. I was an ex-academic, but regretfully, uh, a lot of the academia is foc are focused on having a higher research index than maybe having a relevant uh, research. Uh, we know in the industry, whenever we mention academia, they say, watch out, these people uh, do research that prove that blind people do not drive. You know, and we say, of course not. They have a relevant impact for research. We just need to tie them with the food security, the government, the policy making, and the, and the private sector. So where we stand today, uh, it's the best of days because now food security is the end topic. No longer are investors chasing more buildings and more real estate and people are looking at investing in agriculture, but also it's the toughest times. Indeed, as was mentioned, when you are looking at one healthy earth, uh, you know, one healthy water, one healthy soil, one healthy food, all of this will contribute to one healthy human. And we have several bottlenecks nowadays, especially when we add the regional geopolitical situation. The tensions that used to be here are coming back very fast. And they are driven and will be driven increasingly by agri issues or water issues. For example, the water issues will impact the Turkey, Syria, Iraq food supply and agriculture, as well as the Ethiopia, Sudan, uh, Egypt water, water supply. Add to it, all these countries use common underground water. And increasingly, as we do land reclamation, we are using or maybe overusing the underground water. So we're ending up with a lot of issues there. Uh, hopefully, technology will come to the rescue. Instead of having lots of cows to get meat, we get our energy from alternative proteins so that we'll have less cows, less gas emissions, and uh, we'll be able to have also healthier, uh, healthier uh, food in the process. So let me uh, stop here and we'll wait for the Q&A, except to, to repeat uh, that technology has been a saver for the region on food security and that the region has been among the pioneers in promoting nutrition and healthy nutrition now as a direction instead of just more food uh, for people. Thank you. I know, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Kamel, for all those messages and uh, two of them, uh, which I think we'll uh, all uh, remember, a message about health and the situation of diabetes and heart disease. By the way, something which is also taking place in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, which is also experiencing this major change in health uh, challenges, and also this call for technology and uh, science as a, a driver for sustainable uh, food production.